trigonometry for right angle triangles. Okay, so for this topic, you will need a scientific calculator that has been programmed correctly. When using a scientific calculator, you need to make sure that it's set to degrees and not radians or gradients. Yep, those are both real things. If your calculator is set to degrees, then it will display the letter D at the top of the screen like this. If you see this, then you're basically fine and you can ignore this next bit. However, if your calculator displays a small r or a small g, then your calculator is set to radians or gradients, and this needs to be changed. You need to press shift, setup, and then the number next to deg, which is short for degrees. Uh, on our calculator, the number next to deg is three. And when you've done this, it will take your calculator back to the main screen and you should see the small letter D at the top. You should only need to do this once unless somehow you change it back to radians or gradients. We use trigonometry with right angled triangles when we know the length of two sides, but we want to find the size of one of our missing angles or we have one side and one angle that is not the right angle and we want to find the length of one of our other sides. One of the main purposes of trigonometry is to find all the sides and angles of a right angle triangle but when we only have limited information like mentioned in the previous examples. There are other uses but right angle triangles are the first step. Before explaining how this works, we need a way of clearly identifying the different sides on the right angle triangle. On each of these right angle triangles, we can clearly see that there is a side that is longer than the other two sides, and this side will always be opposite the right angle. So as some of you may already know, this side is always known as the hypotenuse. The name of the other two sides basically depends on the location of the angle that we're focusing on in our question. So let's say there was a question that focused on this angle, on a right angle triangle. Then like before, the hypotenuse can be identified easily because it's opposite the right angle and it's the longer side. But because we're focusing on this angle, then we call the side here the opposite due to the fact that it's opposite the angle that we're focusing on. Another thing that's worth noting is that your opposite angle will never be connected to the angle that you're focusing on. The final side is known as the adjacent as it's next to the angle that we are focusing on. So it's connected to it. Okay, so what if we had a question that focused on this angle instead? Well, based on what we just explained, the hypotenuse doesn't change it is still the longer side that is also opposite the right angle. This side would now be the opposite as it's now opposite the angle that we are focusing on and this side would be the adjacent as it's next to the angle. So look at these triangles. Using the indicated angles, pause the video for a second and see if you can identify the hypotenuse, adjacent and opposite sides of each triangle. Here are the answers. Okay, so now that we know how to label these triangles, here are three equations that we will need. Sine, cosine, and tangent. And from now on, I will refer to these as sine, cos, and tan. A popular method to help uh, use these equations is the Sokatoa method. This will not be given to you when taking the exam, so they have to be remembered. It's basically a funny sounding word that we can use to remind us of the equations. Sokotoa. 
The first letter of each syllable represents sine, cos and tan of the angles. The second letter fills the top space in each triangle. And the final letter fills the bottom space, bottom right hand side. This is a good method as it creates the equations just by writing down this weird sounding word. This method is also effective as it tells you how to calculate any of the three parts of the triangle, which we'll get into in a second. Depending on the question and the information we have, uh, one of these three equations will be used to calculate a side or angle of a right angle triangle. Before answering a question, we would have to decide which of these three equations we will use. First, we do this by labeling the triangle in the question. So looking at this question, we have a known angle, a known side and an unknown side. Which of the three equations would be used to calculate the unknown side? First, we label what we know and what we want to calculate. Next, we look at the three equations to see which has the two labeled sides adjacent and opposite. The equation with adjacent and opposite is the tan equation. Have a look at these right angled triangles. Pause and see which equation you would have to use. Here are the answers. So let's try an example. Here's an example where a side and an angle are known and the length of one side is unknown. What is the length of the unknown side to one decimal place? Okay, the first thing to do is label the triangle. The longer side, which is opposite the right angle, is hypotenuse with a length of five. The question focuses on this angle, which is 37 degrees. So the unknown side is opposite that angle. We have the hypotenuse, the angle, and we need to find the opposite. Okay, so checking the three trig equations from Sokotar, we have sine, which is the one that we're going to use as it has the hypotenuse and we are looking for the opposite. How we use the triangle to help us find the length of the opposite side is by first covering up the opposite. Then what is left reveals the calculation that we need to use. The opposite side will equal to sine 37 multiplied by the hypotenuse 5. The way that we calculate this is by using our scientific calculator. So first we press sine on the calculator and then type 37 make sure the 37 is closed in brackets and then we multiply this by 5. Press equals and the answer to the distance of the opposite equals to 3.00907511 or something uh, along those lines. The question asks us to round it to one decimal place so after we've written all of that down we can round to 3.0 centimeters. Here's another example. Label the triangle again. Since this side is next to the unknown angle and it is not the hypotenuse, then we know that it's the adjacent and it has a length of seven millimeters. This side is the longest and opposite the right angle. Therefore, it's the hypotenuse and it has a length of eight millimeters. The equation that we use has an adjacent and a hypotenuse, so we're going to need cos. When attempting to calculate the missing angle, which we'll call x, in a question, on the triangle, we need to cover cos. Or, let's say for example, if we were using any of the other triangles, we would cover sine or tan. So, after we cover this, what's left is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Therefore, in order to find the cos of the angle, this would be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Now, the important thing to remember is that this doesn't actually give us the value of x. This just tells us what the cos of x is. 
So in order to find x itself, which is the size of the angle, we start by first of all getting the inverse cos on the calculator. We can do this by pressing shift and then cos. Now inside the brackets, we are going to put the adjacent value, which is 7, divided by the hypotenuse value, which is 8, and then finally closing the brackets. Press the equals and then you should get this value. The question asks for the answer to two decimal places, so the final answer should look like this. Here's another question. Pause and try it for yourself. Like always, we label what we know and what we want to know on the triangle. The opposite length and an angle is known. The unknown length will be the adjacent. Looking at the three equations, tan has an adjacent and an opposite. And since we're trying to find the adjacent, we start by covering the adjacent on our triangle. What we are left with is the opposite divided by the tan of the angle. So putting these values into our calculator, we are going to do the opposite divided by the tan of the angle and we should get this as our final answer. So to summarize, if you're looking for a missing angle or length on a right angle triangle, you need to do the following. Correctly label the different sides of the triangle. Use the items you know and the items that you are looking for to choose the triangle with the correct calculations on Sokotoa. Cover the side or angle on the triangle that you are looking for to reveal the correct calculation. If you're trying to find the angle, remember to use the inverse button on your calculator for sine, cos or tan. And that's it. So, uh, well done on making it to this stage. Um, why don't you pause and have a go at some of these questions? The answers are at the end of the video. If you like this series, be sure to comment, like and subscribe to be kept updated on new and in-depth videos and most importantly share. I mean, what's the point of knowledge if you can't share it, right? And if we can make some people not give up on maths because of these videos, then our job is done. If you don't see a topic that you need help with, suggest it in the comment section and we'll try and get around to it. Um, and that's it. Thanks again for watching and for learning. Peace.